Um, this one is to do with doing token transfers via cross-program vacation. Um, just very quick and dirty. You've got two token accounts. You want to send tokens from one to the other, but you want to like do it as part of a wrapper inside of a program for whatever reason. Maybe you want to extend it, do something weird. You know, take it, take some fees, send it somewhere else, send it to an internal program account. But either way, this is just going to be very clear. Just like we're going to create some mints, uh, we're going to create a mint. We're going to create a couple of token accounts. And we're going to send tokens from one to the other, and we're going to do it all via cross-program invocation. Um, at least the transfer, the initialization and stuff we're going to do using a regular JavaScript or TypeScript Solana. So let's get started. We've got our empty project, uh, project repo. Um, and I don't know why this is doing all these errors. Let's see if we can, okay, it's still running, a, still running anchor test by the look of it. Uh, I just ran that before starting. So what we want is to uh, just initialize them in. So this is just all the pre-setup uh, stuff that uh, that would already be um, in existence if you were doing this in reality. And um, so we're going to do, we need a mint key pair. Uh, we need a sender token account. We need a receiver because we're going to have the receiver be a different signer than the uh, the sender, and um, we're going to need the receiver token account as well. Perfect. All right, and we're going to be lazy and we're going to use the um, Solana cookbook for all of this. So first, we're going to create a uh, a mint. So we're going to steal, or not steal, we're going to, going to copy these lines over. That's good for a step. And then next step, just copy over this. Um, cool. First thing that we want to do is to uh, just generate the key pair for Mint. And then because we're not using uh, classic Solana, we're going to just use all the anchor stuff. So we've got program.provider.wallet.publickey. They're going to be the ones who pay for everything. And then for our connection, it's again going to be program.provider.connection. Uh, uh, we're not going to do eight decimals because that's weird. We're going to do six decimals, um, which is more standard, I guess, in, in Solana. Um, and then for mid authority, we're also going to give that to program.provider. Uh, dot wallet dot public key, and you know I we're not going to use the uh, the freeze authority, but it's going to make us put that in anyway. I'm not I'm not going to find out how to set null, and then we want to do program dot provider, and we're going to use a special one. So instead of using what they have here, which is a connection dot send transaction. Uh, where you send the transaction and the, all this kind of shit. Um, we're just going to use program.provider.send, which is a special sort of anchor thing where it'll attach the signature of the wallet automatically if it detects that it's required, which is pretty handy. So this is going to be a create mint transaction, uh, and we're going to send that. And I think that we're going to need the uh, signature of the key pair as well. Uh, and let's see if we can run anchor test on that. Oops. We're going to just run uh, anchor test to see what happens. Just make sure we don't get any errors from this. Okay, cool. And it's passing. So that's sending the thing. Although, actually, we probably need an await there. That would make sense. All right. And then next up. Um, I wonder if we'll print this out just to just to check. Program dot provider. Just quickly check that. 
Ah, okay, interesting. So we're getting a we're getting some sort of error. Program.writer.send. You know what? I'm almost sure that it's that. So let's let's just move on. Move on quickly. Um all right, next couple of things we need to do. We're gonna create a couple of token accounts, and these are ancillary token accounts, which you really shouldn't be making um under most circumstances. Um, should always be making associated token accounts for users, but just for the purpose of testing, we're gonna do it because it's quicker. Um, send, yeah, create sender token transaction. Okay, so from is gonna be program .provider. Wallet um, and then new account copy. Okay, so we actually need to uh, sender token is going to be equal to keyPair.generate. So it's a new empty Solana account. That's the new account. Um, and then the account layout, the account layout should be there, but I guess it's not. And then again, program.provider.connection. Are we not inside the uh, function still? Okay, that's my bad. It's better. Um, mint is mint.public key. And then the token account is a sender token. And then the owner is going to be the program.provider.wallet. Cool. And then we'll send that uh, transaction. And we need the sender token uh, as a signer as well. Perfect. So let's just be super lazy. And here's what we're going to do here. Um, we're going to set the receiver equal to uh, keypair.generate. So again, we just want to have a different owner of the account just for the sake of it, just for illustration purposes. Um, so we're going to create the receiver token account. This guy is still going to pay for it, um, but the new account is going to be there, and the authority or the owner is going to be the receiver. Don't know what's going on there. And we'll need the uh, the receiver token to sign, but we don't need the uh, receiver themselves to sign, um, seemingly, uh, in order to do this. And that should that should work, okay? Um, let's do a quick anchor test. Unknown signer, so receiver token. Yeah, for the new account public key, that makes sense. That's there. Same with sender token. Program.writer.send. Unknown signer. Ah, that's why. Sorry, we didn't update this. Perfect. Okay, uh, that should that should fix that. All right, and next we're gonna. We're going to mint um, some tokens. So again, just go to the uh, cookbook and take what we can. So this is like let mint tokens. All right, so it's going to be mint public key. Uh, receiver is going to be the sender token dot public key. 
and then the Mint Authority is the uh, program dot provider. Uh, and we're not gonna we're gonna send them ten. Or right, you know, let's just send them two, and then we'll send back one at the end of all this. That makes sense to me. Uh, and then again, it's await program dot provider dot send, uh, and we're gonna send mint token transaction. Uh, and the signer, the only signer we need is the uh, program dot provider uh, wallet, and that should do that automatically. Okay, and then. Finally, I kind of like um, where is this thing? Oh yeah, get a get token account balance. We we can do this. Console dot log, and then sender token public key. And this is program dot provider dot connection. Cool. That should be that should be all that we need for this setup. Um, we've got our mint, we've got our two token accounts, and we have some balance in the uh, in the token account. So there you go. We've got two tokens with six decimals at the end. Now let's get into the uh, the actual meat of it. This lib.rs over here. First off, we're gonna have to uh, include some extra dependencies in our cargo.toml. So this cargo.toml is this one here uh, on the left. So it's like below programs, just above lib.rs. So we have um, dependencies equals anchor spl 0 0.1882. Um, and this is, this is again another wrapper that anchor has provided around the token program. And we're writing another wrapper <laughs> around that, but it, it makes sense. So what are we going to do? We're going to do transfer wrapper. Um, and then we've got our context struct, which is where we define all of the accounts that we're going to need. And that's this one here. So this is all the accounts that we're going to pass in uh, at the start. And we need to use the lifetime of info, just because that's the convention that we follow in Anchor. So the uh, first thing we're going to need is we're going to need the sender to actually sign for this um, because we're going to be sending tokens from their account um, and the public and the SPL token program will check that they're a signer. Then we're going to need a, oh actually I skipped, skipped ahead cool, a little bit. We're going to need to import a bunch of uh, structs from the SPL token program library. So. See if we got this here. This IDEO pool. Ah, here we are. So th this is the SPL um, token program kind of library in in Anchor. It's in Anchor slash SPL slash source slash token dot rs, and it's got a whole bunch of functions. So this is the transfer function that we're going to be using, and transfer relies on this struct um, that we're going to provide, which is here. Sort of like you've got the from account, the to account, and the authority account. Um, and that should be enough to get us get us by. So back here, we're going to import some of those structs and those functions that we saw. So we're going to import the token. Um, there's a token account um, for deserializing mints and token accounts. That looks good anyway. Um, okay, so sender token account is just going to be uh, account and that's a token account. Um, and then we're gonna need the receiver token account, which is gonna be another token account. Uh, and then we're just gonna need the mint, which is itself going to be of type mint. And what's great is that Anchor will deserialize these and if they don't fit into the expected sort of format of like decimals and um, freeze authority and mint authority, it should error, and if it's also and also if it's not owned by the token program, it should error. And then we need the token program in order to uh, send the cross program invocation to it. 
So I think that's, uh, we've got the signer, we've got the two accounts to send to, we've got the mint that it's gonna be there, and we've got the token program. Now, because we're actually updating data on these two accounts, we need to mark them as mutable. Otherwise, when we send, nothing will happen. And then finally, or not quite finally, but if we're gonna do transfers, we need to format um, our transfer, our context here into a cross-program invocation context. This is just the format that Anchor wants to see all cross-program invocation contexts in. So we need to make a, uh, an implementation function that does this. So it might look a little confusing, I don't know, but just follow the uh, convention and you should be fine. So you add an implementation on the context struct and we're gonna call it transfer context. Uh, and it's just gonna take itself as an argument and it's gonna return CPI context. And now all these things here are just like basically unused lifetimes, but we do need them to specify that we're gonna use info and then we're gonna use transfer and who knows what any of this stuff does, but just uh, as long as you do it, it'll work. So we're gonna create a new CPI context and that's gonna take a couple of things. It's gonna take the program. So first off, we pass in the uh, token program and that's to account info as well. Cool. And then we need to set in the accounts. So the accounts are gonna be in the format of the struct that we mentioned before. Um, it's gonna be from self.sender, oops, and that's to account info. Two is gonna be self.receiver, to account info, and then the authority who's gonna sign for this, but they've already signed the overall transaction, so they don't need to sign a second time, is just gonna be the uh, sender. And uh, let's do kind of a. And that's all we need. And then finally, we go up here and we're gonna add an extra argument, which is just the amount that's to be sent, U64. Um, and then we're gonna do token transfer. And then we're gonna call the function on the accounts context. So this is, should be transfer context. And then we're gonna put in the amount as well. And that returns a program result, so we don't know if it's gonna be an error or not, so we just put a little question mark at the end. And then just to test internally, uh, you don't have to do it this way, but you can do ctx.accounts.sender token dot reload again little question mark at the end just it's going to return could return an error and then we're just going to log that ctx or cancel sender token dot uh, thing is dot amount she will just do let's do this here as well starting tokens and then we'll just see that there's a difference. And then let's just make a new test for this. Okay. Um, yeah, just transfer wrapper. Cool. And then I think we need, yeah, we're, we're gonna need the amount and we're gonna make that a big number. So it's just anchor.bn. Um, and we're gonna send one of the two that we have. And then it's just gonna be program .rpc transfer wrapper. And then we get the amount. And then we need to specify what the accounts are. So we've got the sender, I think was the first one. Um, 
So that's going to be program.provider.wallet.publickey. And then the sender token is just going to be sender token.publickey. And then receiver token, same thing. And we've got the mint, mint.publickey. And token program is the, uh, <laughs> the token program ID. And I guess that's basically it. I mean, we can we can console log the uh, the account balance afterwards as well. Cool, and it should just—it really should just be as simple as that. But of course, there's going to be some kind of error. Okay, for example, I did not use a wait here. I often forget that. Oh no no no! So I forgot to put in a proper camel case. So fix the camel case, and that should run okay. But let's see how it goes. Yes, and now we can see each account has one. And we are basically done with this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, talk to you later.